So by now we should all know how neural networks work, right? Quick refresher, you've probably heard of the top down and bottom up concept. Pretend you're walking through the woods and you hear something slither on the ground. You might think it's a snake because of past experiences or expectations. That's a classic top down. While bottom up is if you see a black thin pose and you think it's a snake because of the shape and the physical cues that you observe. Top down is perceptions or our expectations and prior knowledge. Bottom up is sensory analysis that begins on the entry level. Again, that black hose that you interpret as a snake. With neural networks, it works in a similar way where you try to classify a shape. Let's say, is this black horizontal? Over time in iterations in these different nodes, you come to the conclusion that this is horizontal based on the shapes and then classifying accordingly. And that's how more complex neural networks work let's say the classic dog and cat example, where based on the lines of the separate parts of the picture, go through the nodes based on these lines, if it's a cat, in this case, maybe a human. Ultimately, we're looking for those very specific lines, which will then help us classify what it is we're looking at. So you have an input layer, and then you have the output layer, and the nodes in between that help classify and move the AI, the neural network, into the right direction to find the output layer. One of these classic neural networks networks is called a convolutional neural network. And as a rule of thumb, you want to train it with a data set of over 5,000 to make it more accurate. And that's how these neural networks are able to classify with extremely high accuracy certain images. Now, in theory, our brains are just more complex neural networks. The key is iterations. And that got me thinking, since I'm a trader and I basically train my neural network to identify certain patterns that trigger me to be like, ah, this is a good buy entry. This is good sell entry. What if I just train my brain on the recent tail ends of the bell curve of what works the best and what I should probably avoid? Now to date, I've made 7,943 trades over the last two years of my favorite trading strategy, which is breakout momentum front side around the time the market opens. It's a very short window and that's where I make most of my profits. Since I trade most working days, I do take several days off a year of trading. It comes out to about 33 trades per day. So my brain does get quite a bit of iterations, but at the same time, practice makes perfect. And this brain can definitely use a few more iterations. So that's why I'm gonna take four moments in the last three months where I've had my biggest winner percent dollar and then my biggest loser percent and dollar and then see what happens. Now, I was already thinking this is gonna take quite a bit of time to do 100 iterations because these trades last multiple minutes and I wanna watch what happens before and after. So each iteration will probably take around 10 minutes long and it got even worse once I did my first trade I was like oh boy this is gonna take a really long time all right that took I mean that took quite a long time so we're talking 250 minutes for the first round oh my god we're talking four hours minimum of studying with uninterrupted studying. So that's basically going to be more like six hours. We're talking about 24 hours of studying time here for this 100, 100 replays. That's a lot. Not to mention all the editing time after that for this video. That's going to be heavy. I guess I should probably get right back to it, huh? This we're gonna wanna do probably closer to 25. But in the name of science and getting better as a trader, I thought it was worth it. So let's get with the back testing and train this neural network. So the first trade was the 2nd of August, 8.2103 AM TD, not RD, TD. This is the situation. So it's paused right now. Let's do this 25 times here. And I'm gonna do it 100 times, 25 times for each set up biggest winner dollar biggest winner percentage biggest loser dollar and biggest loser percentage for the last three months which i feel like is the best to do the testing on because it was a little bit slow a little bit very unique price action because we are in a bear market so i feel like studying this would make some a lot more sense than studying let's say 20 uh, 20 when the market was just crazy. Although I gotta say, once the market heats up again, we get into a bull market, I do wanna study some of those more intense trading sessions and tickers. But for now, this definitely makes the most sense. Whew, let's get it. This is a little bit the reason I'm not crazy about um, on demand. It's just, everything's like a little bit off. There's no time in sales, you can't use hotkeys. But still, I'm here to just 
neural network code my brain. We're at 1096 right now. So this is a blue sky setup. This is really nice. This basically means there's no mapped out resistance ahead of us. Things are looking strong. MACD is looking really sexy. Volume is definitely in the room. Uh, especially for a $10 stock, $11 stock. This is an insane amount of volume. AMTD is looking really good. Five minute maybe is a bit extended. One minute maybe pulling back to 1060 or so. Not working at all. Let's go ahead and reset this. Let's reset the account as well. Let's press play. Let's try this again. So we, ticker's moving up here. So lo and behold, I'm doing some research here and actually in the end, on demand does not allow you to trade in pre-market hours, unfortunately. That's the same realization I have had. So let's go back here. And basically, now I'm not gonna be placing orders, which I feel like is fine because again, I can't do the hotkeys, the time and sales don't show up and the order book is a little bit off. So it's not like I'm getting my real trading in anyway. I also checked and there's only one trade that happens after the market opens. So I will do the live trading or the real fake trading on that ticker. That's one of my biggest losers actually. But for now, I guess I'm just gonna stare at the price action. I'm gonna stare to see if there's some order flow here that makes sense or that sticks out. I'm gonna stare at the five minute, the one minute, the volume and the MACD and just try to identify these trends. One hour later. <sighs> that was, that was attempt number, number one. <laughs> Just for reference, this is the actual ticker. So I'm trading it here. I had my biggest win. I didn't trade this pullback. I didn't trade this pullback. I didn't trade any of this. I should have been trading this whole move. And then right here in this area, I probably would have had a loser. And I sh maybe I would have had a loser here as well. Um, but I should have jumped right back on it here in this area. And then this trade, I would have had a loser. I would have you know, ideally cut as quick as possible, had a loser, and then boom, walk away. I left a lot of profits on this trade. Woo, look how bright it is right now. I'm gonna be studying for hours, so this sun's definitely not gonna last the whole time. There we go, big breakout. 1440, there we just topped out. It hit, it, did you see that? It tried like boom, 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 boom. And it tried those few times there to break 1440 and got rejected hard, which makes sense. Five minutes is super extended. One minute, one minute's extended. Everything's extended here. I basically drew that here because it was retesting. And look, here we had that retest um, because we we pulled back, broke down below it. So that was basically the high. Let's keep that in mind for future times that um, if we have one of those failed moves and the open happens, there might be a big rejection off that. So much to learn here. My goal though is at one point, something's really gonna click. Something's gonna be like, oh my God, how did I not notice this the whole time? That was the money shot. Um, so I need to go back here to like 20, 18, 18. This is the big breakout here. I should have been milking it. I would actually like to see what it looks like here um, closer to like 815. So let's go way back on this one. I mean, I'm not doing this to save time. I'm doing this to learn. So I'm going to go back even further. Here we go. This is that first initial pullback. So the mountain range here is lower. That's really important to understand. Although it looks really glary in the camera, this is when I get that nice sunshine while I'm studying my trades. October 12th here today, another day, another studying session. So I realized what really helps is every iteration kind of focus on one thing a little bit more, like one time focus more on the five minute, one time focus more on the MACD, one time focus more on the one minute price action, so on and so forth. This time I'm keeping a close eye on the MACD, seeing what we can find. You know what I also realized is the fact that August 2nd was a Tuesday, which is one of my best trading days. Tuesday and Wednesday are my best, and then Thursday as well. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is really when I wanna go hard. On Monday and Friday, it's usually better for me to end the day early if possible, as soon as I'm green.
everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. You guys know what time it is. Another day, another study session. Let's get to it. And I always start off by re-watching yesterday's stream or a personal recording, whatever I do at the time, and just analyzing every trade I did and then taking notes on my watch list from the day before on each ticker and kind of my feelings for it, how what I did right, what I did wrong, and how I want to go. So first I do this, and then I'm doing the 100 iterations, which, whew, what are we, on day number four or five now? Oh, day number, day number five. Oh boy, this is still more work than I was expecting it would be. And I was expecting it would be a lot of work. Morning guys, it is Saturday, it is, what is it, 7.13 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I just got back from my morning walk, having my espresso, and I realized I gotta spend at least four hours today watching this, otherwise I'm not gonna get it done this week. I got a flight around four, so it's gonna get a little tight today, but I think it's doable. I can't believe it's taken me so long. I think I gotta spend maybe a little bit less time on each ticker. I've been watching like sometimes 20 minutes per iteration. I think I can only spend like two to three minutes per iteration on average. So sometimes more, sometimes less, but I, I don't think I could do more than that on average or else I'll be here another two, three weeks. Also, don't mind the hair and the uh, flickering lights. I'm not, it's actually not flickering in here, just on camera. I usually don't use these lights, but it's so dark outside that I figured I need some light in here. And the hair just because I was walking around outside with my beanie on because it's freezing cold outside and uh, cheers. New ticker, let's go. This one moves so different. This is a classic sub dollar originally and wow, we're talking like a whole different ball game right now. So for this ticker, I actually had my biggest percent winner, 9.21%, but I just didn't trade with big size. Oftentimes these sub dollars, I get a little bit nervous. I traded at 9.08, so I was probably buying here and then taking profits here, but again, it didn't have that volume, so I guess I was going a little bit light on it. Plus, you know, these OG sub dollars, I'm always a little bit nervous on. Uh, big five minute breakouts. Looks like we had a nice um, pop over resistance here and it's over the 180 day SMA. This one's actually a really interesting scenario because here we have that pullback to like, so we broke the previous five minute candle and then we had the original pullback to VWAP. Usually that's nine EMA. And then we actually broke VWAP and then we pulled to the nine EMA, but that's below VWAP. And usually I'm not crazy about trading that. Although the five minute setup is still somewhat there. Really interesting ticker, totally different. I'm excited that we're getting such variety um, for this testing. In the meantime, while I'm training my brain, how many of you traders back test your trading strategy? Are you reliving the moments on paper trading or on demand trading? And are you studying your past trades. Check out the pinned comment right below this video and vote now. Gotta keep thinking what I would be doing. So my mind right now, I'm actually thinking about not trading this one uh, because it feels a bit extended here. Thinking maybe we'll get a VWAP pullback. Remember we're, we're still buff here. This is a very bullish setup because this is a new five minute candle. We're only on minute 907. So maybe it's going to pull back here. Uh, it's not going to pull back because we're still not OG front side right now. 130 getting chipped. This could be the break of 130 here. Look at those buyers on the bid. Bid is stacking. Nice move there. 133, 134. Look at this. Because we're still not new Friday. Five minute. That's why. That's good. 908. We still have two minutes in this five minute here. Strong move. MACD strong. Volume is a little bit light, but that's fine. I love this action here. Buying these pullbacks right now. Buying these pullbacks. Let's see how far it can go. We're over 150. 150 is now support. Buying around 150. Probably got filled there. Looking for that, boom, taking profits now at 167. Buying again around 150. Might be a bit extended. Volume though is nice. New breakout. This is why you gotta, this is when you gotta get aggressive. This is just so beautiful. Oh my Lord. So staying focused on what the five minutes doing is just so key. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Been sipping on my last sip of coffee now for like well over an hour. I don't want it to go to waste. 75, wow, this is, I don't think I would be trading this one now just because the five minutes so extended. 
uh, or not extended necessarily, but it's about to end. That was a good potential entry there on that quick first pullback. VWAP's a little bit far down. If we break this close at 56, that's a big red flag. We broke it there, but we found support at 51. So you gotta be a little bit careful. Ultimately, we broke it here. So you don't wanna be, you don't wanna be balls to the wall. You wanna be careful at this point. Next support at VWAP. So buying on that on that support there at 1.5 would have been nice, but taking profits quick because we broke the low here. So what's the next support? VWAP. So sometimes front running here is actually okay. Don't hold and hope. Take those quick profits. I mean, you could be taking in 2-3% like three times already, but usually doing a trade more than once is never a good idea. Once a setup, right? So this would be the front running VWAP setup. Now it's pulling back more. Now you could do the VWAP setup. Boom, 44. Let's say an entry at 44. Taking profits again. I'd be out of this one. I'm watching this one longer than I should be. I've been watching this one for like 10 minutes. The big trade was here, obviously, but I kind of want to see how this one plays out. So we had that VWAP bounce. I would be out right now. I did the VWAP bounce already once. Looks like I could have done it twice. So next time I'm going to focus more on MACD. There was that failed breakout. This is a big rejection here. 40, 40, 39 could have been maybe an entry or 140. Set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do. The aftermath of preparation. Good food, good. All right, let's keep doing it. So just out of curiosity, I'm actually gonna watch this one from the very beginning because I usually don't do that on these tickers. So let's get started here. This is AREB while it's still sub dollar. In any second, it's just gonna find that volume and it's gonna pop up. Boom. All right, there's the pop number one. Volume's coming in. Look at that. Look at these huge amount of buyers. Instantly, it's up 22%. Now it's not going to be on my scanner at this point because my scanner doesn't pick up stuff um, that fast on TD Ameritrade. Up 40%. Volume is only at 10,000 shares. Look at that pullback. Whoa. 12% pullback. Volume's definitely in the room. Oh wow. So I wouldn't even be trading this ticker, but it's going to be popping on my chart at one point where my scanner won't happen on a, on on demand. I'm talking in real life it would be. One step at a time. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you can control. This point 40,000 shares. It starts getting a bit more interesting. First candle 50% pretty much. Wow, this is really where it gets interesting. This is that first break and look at this 5 minute held. This is a key spot. Five minute held there. Broke slightly, but popped back above it. This is when you want to get aggressive. You want to get really aggressive here. Let's say we buy at the 120, 119. We're slightly down. Buy again at 116. We're doing small size right now. Looking for that break over 125. MACD is good. Volume's good. Let's go. Boom, boom, boom. Taking some profits on the way. That's 11% candle. I mean, you could be making tons of money right now. Now it's officially over 100. Take those profits and re-enter where the bid is stacking bit of stacking here all these points would have been good re-entries look at that quick move there could have even set a limit order boom there's that break of one three we didn't map out this ticker nearly as much as we should have 145 is pretty key we're actually kind of in that area for a bit one six is key i don't know if i want to have too many lines on my chart it's also kind of kind of hectic 180 is key let's kind of watch this from here using these zones as support but you could probably find that out on the bid. So there's anything, you know, hole in half dollars, hole in half dollars and quarters too. So 150 buying here, new minute, we're at 909. Bought on the 150, maybe 153. Popping up again, taking profits, taking profits quick. Boom, it did break out though. Now let's buy here at 161 where the bid is stacking. There's the bid stacking at 61, 64. Let's buy here at 60. We bought maybe taking profits again. There's that next high at 180. So these are all like 5% increments. Now let's see how much more it runs from here. Remember guys, new five minute candle, beware. Always know if there's a new five minute candle brewing. This is a buy right now. Look at that support here at 156. This is a buy right now. It's, re it's having some problems, I would be cutting. Next entry at 152. Now we're working down the base. Now we're going support, support, support. Now we're scalping on those support zones. Five minute broke, so we're on the way down. These are all scalps. These are not looking for new highs right now. Not looking for new highs right now. Five minute candle. Current five minute candle broke the support of the last five minute candle. I don't know where we got an entry, but I'd be out again right now. Scalp. Let's look for another pullback, and then we can scalp. Next pullback zone is 146. 
144 maybe. We can front run. There's nothing wrong with front running, but take profits quick. 148. I don't know if we would have got that second attempt here. This is getting a little sketchy when you do like these multi attempts because you just don't know when it's gonna fade. Positive thoughts are overtaken. I got patience. One day at a time is how you walk. I think if you're really scalpy, you can do the same trade like two or three times, maybe two times max. Yeah, now you get that potential nine E may bounce. Interesting, very interesting. All right, let's get let's get back to it. Do my best, man. I'll take it. I gotta say what I love about this is obviously the picture, but then also my comments on each trades. And it's funny because each time it's you know, so relevant. Decent first trades, but the last one got me. This is on the sub dollar. And then here on AMTD, that first ticker, you know, this is the one I, I said I stopped trading a hair too soon. I gotta say that last push was amazing. It could have doubled my PL. Eventually we got the drop. I thought we would see it at 8.30. So it's interesting how I think about these things. And now doing the iterations 25 times each, I realize totally where I messed up. It's, it's just so eye-opening. Positive thoughts are overtaken. I got patience. One day at a time is how you operate a cadence. By the way, are you looking for more videos on my strategy? Check out this short video where I break down my five minute trend following strategy.